okay, on this section, we're actually going to be finding lines of best fit, lines that come uh, that best fit data values. And uh, if you're only given two points, you can do that by hand. But if you're given more than two points, we're going to need to use Excel or a graphing calculator to do this. So let's go ahead and do this. Uh, the intro problem here says the following table gives the number of Canadi Canada goose breeding pairs in northern Quebec. Get the line of best fit and answer the questions below. So here's my data. T equals zero is 1988. So this is 1988. This would be 1993 and so on. So here's my years. And here's my number of breeding pairs. And you can see that they were going down for a good while. And then they started to pick back up here. But we're going to get the line that best fits this data. So what I did is I went to the Excel sheet. I went to the linear sheet and I typed in this data right here. And once I type this in, I can click this button here to get my uh, equation that comes closest to all these data points. Now that equation, the graph of that equation may not go through a single data point, but this is the equation that comes closest to all the data points. It's called your line of best fit. And when you click this, it gets the equation and it puts the slope, the A, right here, and your B, your y-intercept, right there. So uh, now we can answer some questions about this. So let's go back and see what the questions were. And now that we have that equation, it says, what is the slope and what, is it, uh, what does it tell me? And the y-intercept is part b. So let's go ahead and get that much. Well, the slope is negative 8.16. And that means we can think of that as negative 8.16 over 1. The 1 is the run, which is along the year axis. So each year, the number of, of Canada breeding pairs of these geese or whatever it's about is dropping by 8. So the number of breeding pairs are dropping by 8 every year, 8.16 every year is what the slope is telling me. The y-intercept is really the coordinate 0, 112.62. So 0 uh, for the x variable is the time. Well, year 0 back on this problem, I believe, was the year 1988. So according to this model, back in 1988, there was 112 uh, breeding pairs. Now, there was actually 115, but this model predicts there to be 112. So the model is the, this line, and the, these dots here are the data points. And you can see it's just under that one. And I believe that the next question, let's see here. The next problem says write a question about the problem situation which you need to find the x-intercept root. And then what is the x-intercept root? Well, let's go ahead and take a look. Well, the root here, or the x-intercept, is going to be when this line hits the x-axis. And when the line hits the x-axis, that will be the year in which the number of breeding pairs will be what? Zero. OK, it'll be zero. So the question about the x-intercept is, when will the number of breeding pairs be zero? And the answer to that question is your x-intercept. And we could solve it you know, by hand if we wanted to by putting in zero for y and then solving this, take the negative 8.16 to the other side, then divide through by that, and the x-intercept would end up being 13.79 or about 13.8. And that would mean, actually, the coordinate is 13 point, let's say, 8 comma zero, okay, because that's really the uh, point. And that would tell me 13.8 years after 1988 that there shouldn't be any more uh, breeding pairs of these uh, geese. So um, that's what that problem actually uh, would mean on that. 13.8 years after 1988, there will be no more breeding pairs. Now we could check this. We could go to the end here. Let's go out to about 14. If I do that, boom, my graph automatically changes, and I can see that uh, that point right there. So that's that's pretty nice that you can change it. You can get your line of best fit that quick. Yeah, that's nice. I'm sentencing you to 20 more months in prison. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, says the uh, Kool-Aid guy. So it's uh, pretty nice that it does that. And it's pretty much impossible to do this by hand uh, without calculus or whatever. So this is uh, the way to do it. Now, if you only have two points, you can do that by hand. And the next video shows how to do that. But there's another thing that comes up, and that's the last question on this, is your correlation coefficient r. And what does it mean? Well, your correlation coefficient is this value right here, and that's going to change for each set of data points that you put in there. And it tells you how well this model comes close to these data points right here, how close do your data points come to your line. And so if this number here is negative 0.7 or lower, it can go clear down to negative 1. If it's negative 0.7 or lower, clear down to negative 1, then there would be a strong negative 
relationship or negative correlation between these two variables. In other words, there is a trend here of a downward trend on this. As time goes on, the number of breeding pairs is dropping, and it's kind of a significant relationship right here with this R value being uh, less than negative 0.7. And again, when it's negative and it's 0.7 or lower, negative 0.7 or lower, then it's a strong negative relationship. Now let's take a look at other uh, relationships here. Here's the graph and, and those answers that we got here. See the correlation coefficient, let's go ahead and summarize that a bit. If your correlation coefficient is close to 1, meaning 0.7 or higher, like this graph that I have here in the book, then that means there's a strong positive relationship. Maybe you might think that there's a strong positive relationship between the amount of hours that you study and your grade in the course. Uh, if so, th then you would expect this R value here to be greater than, uh, to be 0.7 or higher, and the highest it can be is 1. Okay? Uh, if it's close, if if it's close to negative 1, like we had on the last problem, a value of negative 0.7 or lower, then it's a strong negative relationship. Now, if the model is close to 0, anywhere from negative 0.7 up to positive 0.7, then there is a weak relationship or not a strong uh, uh, relationship anyway. For example, if we had this type of problem where the R value is 0.51, well, that would be a weak positive relationship. Maybe. Maybe that might be the relationship between uh, how tall you are and how good you are at English or something. You know, there might be some sort of relationship, but not a strong relationship. And then here's a weak negative relationship. The data points are pretty far away from the line. And again, you don't really make a judgment call. You use the number here to decide whether it's a weak or strong positive or negative relationship, and that's your R value. So we'll stop right there, and we'll hit another one in a second.